for number seven, we are drawing these curves, finding the region between them, and then in this area between them, we're going to revolve it about the x-axis. So um, let's draw these curves. Now, we'll begin by drawing y is equal to x cubed, and notice it only wants it, both of these curves for x is greater than zero. So uh, we are going to just uh, draw the positive side, right? So if I have here my my positive side, um, and let's let's draw the the cubic function. So the cubic function, um, I'm going to draw. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to draw the scale here. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. I'm going to draw it in a different kind of three, four, five. Yeah, different kind of scale, or else we're not going to be able to see that intersection. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Um, so let's begin with what our y is equal to x cubed. So over here we have zero, zero, and then one, one. Um, so it does. Let's see. Half of it. Half of it. We have. Uh, one eighth, so maybe over here, yeah. So it does go kind of like this and then grows very fast. So that is our y is equal to x cubed for x greater than uh, or equal to zero. And now we have to draw our our curve um, y is equal to x, right? So y is equal to x is just a line that goes straight here. Um, connects these points so let's yeah and now we can see that the area between them is let me just write this down this is y is equal to x where x is greater than or zero and we can see that the area between them is this um, this section here that we colored right so when we revolve it about the x-axis what is happening is that we're we're revolving uh, because it isn't there's a hole here in the bottom right uh, so we're revolving these really these washers that go they go like this and like this so we are having yeah we're having these these washers that are kind of drawn like this maybe yeah and now what is interesting to notice here is that the, the thickness of these washers, they change, right? Because over here, they're sort of at maximum thickness. But if I, if I went, say, up here where it's very narrow, then now my, my washer, it would look... Uh, maybe I'll, I'll draw this in a different color so we don't get that mixed up. Let's see. Maybe I'll draw it in blue. So if I were up here... Now my washer would be would be very different because even though it would be bigger, it would definitely be it would be thinner, right? So over here my washer would be would be thinner. So this width does change and therefore it does affect our volume. But it's interesting to see that it changes as uh, as a function of x. So the thickness of this this little um, the thickness between the two circles, it changes as a function of x, right? So we do have to model it. Now, uh, when we're modeling this, what we're saying is, okay, we have over here, we have two circles, right? We have two circles, the, the smaller circle and the bigger circle. And we only want the, the area of the bigger circle minus the area of the small circle. We don't want the... We just want the section, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to take two circles and we're going to take, we're going to say that this is pi times uh, r1 squared minus pi times r2 squared. That is the area that describes um, this, this area over here. That's the equation that describes it. So for this equation, we have to notice that the smaller radius is described by the blue curve, x cubed, and the bigger radius is described by the green curve. So we're going to set up our integral. Uh, and before we can set up our integral, we do need to know where these curves intersect. So we're just going to set them equal to each other. So x cubed is equal to x. I'm going to bring everything over to one side. 
minus x is equal to 0, and then I'm going to factor it. So I have x times x squared minus 1 is equal to 0. So we can see that uh, one of the solutions is x is equal to 1. And x is equal to 1, that's a solution, and x is equal to 0, it's another solution. We do have a third solution where x is minus 1, but we're only looking at the um, positive side, so that doesn't matter. So our solutions are this point that connects it and this point over here which are our boundaries of integration. So let's, um, let's just set up our integral. It is the integral from, from, zero, uh, from 0 to 1 of pi r1 minus pi r2, pi r1 squared. So of pi, what is r1? What is the biggest radius? Because we're doing the biggest circle minus the smaller. The biggest is the one in green, right? It's, it is the upper boundary here. So we have x squared minus pi times the second curve, the smallest, is x cubed squared. So let's just put the pi outside and kind of clean this up a little bit. So this is equal to pi times, I'll factor out the pi, the integral from 0 to 1 of x squared minus x cubed squared is x to the power of 6. So when we evaluate this integral, we have that this is equal to pi times x cubed over 3 minus x to the 7 over 7, evaluated from 0 to 1. So this is equal to pi times, we're just going to evaluate the upper boundary because the lower boundary will go to 0. Um, so this is just of 1 third minus 1 seventh. So when we uh, put this into our calculator, let's see what that gives us. This gives us uh, 4 pi over 21. And that is the volume of this, of this shape over here, bounded by the curves x equals, uh, y is equal to x cubed and y is equal to x um, in, the positive, in the positive side.